In 2009, a trailer was released for a documentary that would cover the reunion of American punk rock band Blink-182. After years of delays, conflict with the label, and a second breakup, fans are still waiting to see the infamous documentary. This is the story of the Blinkumentary. In 2009, Haven Lamoureux and his two-person production company, Handsome Ransom, were working on a project with Blink-182's drummer, Travis Barker. The band, who had broken up four years ago, had just announced a reunion and Lamoureux had an idea. He wanted to make a documentary. But this wouldn't be a typical documentary. Instead, this would be a gritty, authentic look at the band's lives and performances out on the road. After meeting with bassist Mark Hoppus and guitarist Tom DeLonge separately, Lamoureux pitched the idea to the band and they loved it. He would say this in a 2011 interview with Yidio. I pitched them the idea of me telling the story of them becoming a band again. They were all receptive in their own way and I started going to tour rehearsals and I just started rolling the cameras. Soon, Blink-182 was out on tour again, and Handsome Ransom was in the thick of it, capturing the raw emotion of the tour. I think they allowed me inside more of the intimate situations because of our relationship, and that is just thrilling to me because it let me tell a more honest story. Blink's insanely successful world tour was in full swing, and on August 26, 2009, the first trailer for the Blinkumentary would arrive. The fan base was immediately hungry for the release. Several months later, on November 7, 2009, a second trailer was released and the fan base was clearly starving to see the film. It seemed like nothing could go wrong. Blink-182's reunion tour stretched further, partly due to its success and partly due to Travis being uncomfortable flying after surviving a devastating plane crash. Despite this, during a 2010 interview, Mark Hoppus would say, Tonight is the last night of shooting for the Blink documentary and they've been editing for the last few months and it'll be out soon. Fans wouldn't have to wait much longer for this up-close and personal look at the band. Lamoureux's vision was nearly complete. But then, something changed. In the 2011 interview with Yidio, Lamoureux would say, I think that in any documentary, you have an idea that you set out to capture, but you can never really plan a documentary film. It has stuck to the core idea, which is to tell the story of the reformation of the band, but then it kind of took on a life of its own. While Blink-182 were out on the road, they announced that they would return to the studio to record a new full-length album. On January 10th, 2010, a new trailer showed the band recording material for that album. Despite being finished, the completed Blinkumentary would resume production to capture the process of the band recording the new record. By this point, fans had begun to wonder whether this documentary would ever come to be. The response was radio silence. A full two years would pass without any news about the Blinkumentary until finally Handsome Ransom would post a photo from the film screening for the band and label executives. The fan base was excited, but many of them were annoyed at how long it took to complete the documentary. Then on May 3rd of 2012, Handsome Ransom posted that it was up to the label to decide on a release date. This announcement was the straw that broke the punk rock camel's back. Much of the fan base began to lash out at Lamoureux, either begging him to release the film or blaming him for the lack of release. After one full year of backlash, Lamoureux would respond to a fan on Twitter saying the reason the documentary wasn't out was a band issue. Later in 2013, Mark and Tom would allegedly say in an Australian radio interview that the documentary is a work in progress and that it felt outdated and misrepresenting of the band by the time it was finished. Full disclosure, I found many references to this interview online, but I couldn't actually find a copy in my research, so take that at face value. Near the end of 2014, fans would be devastated when Tom DeLonge announced that he would be leaving Blink-182 for the second time. Mark would comment on this later, saying, Everything was always very contentious. There was always just a strange vibe. I knew there was something wrong. In an interview with Gigwise on December 18th, 2014, Tom would say, Yeah, I'm excited about getting that footage out. I just think it's just incomplete, but it's great footage and we will definitely see it come to fruition somehow. So was the band unhappy with the footage or did it just need more work? Much like the air around Blink-182 in 2014, there seemed to be a lot of contradictory evidence floating around. Still, it was clear that fans were interested in the documentary because they would bring it up whenever possible. A year later, during an October 2015 Reddit AMA, a fan asked about the documentary, to which Mark would say, Hope the Blink documentary sees the light of day. That was our fault. Six years after the initial trailer, people still hounded Lamoureux for updates about the documentary. Finally, on December 6, 2015, he tweeted saying, the band buried it. 
and that would seem to be the end of the journey. But why did the band bury this documentary? We know now that while Blink's reunion was painted as a warm return to form among friends, it was a tumultuous time for the band at best. The recording of their 2011 album Neighborhoods was stalled by endless touring, side project tinkering, and recording in separate studios. The Blinkumentary may have been less of an intimate look at a band growing back together and more a magnum opus of a band crumbling to ashes. And while the band has continued forward like a seemingly unstoppable monolith of unrequited love songs and dick jokes, I can't help but wonder about the actual victims of this story. Not the fans or the band themselves, but Haven Lamoureux and his partner Matt Edwards. These two men took on a passion project for a band they loved. It stretched on for years and they poured in hundreds of hours of filming and editing while still having to hold down full-time jobs to pay their bills. To this day, fans still blame Lamoureux for shelving the Blinkumentary even though the band has taken responsibility. It seems we may never get to see the full Blinkumentary. Instead, the label compiled footage from the film to make the Wishing Well music video, and perhaps that's the best we'll get. However, Handsome Ransom printed screening copies of the film, meaning that someone somewhere has a copy laying around. So perhaps with the recent announcement of Tom reuniting with Blink once again, we still may get to see this infamous documentary. However, for the time being, the Blinkumentary is lost media.